Chapter 1. Everything is possible if you're willing to try. You can do anything you set your mind to achieve. As women, we are encouraged to tone down our ambition and wait for men to do everything because we are seen as the weaker sex. This needs to stop, and we have the power to end it. Jen Hatmaker Contrary to what many people think, a woman's place is not in the kitchen. A woman can be anything she desires at any point in her life. In today's world, patriarchy has eaten so deeply into the fabric of our existence that for a woman to stand up for herself, it takes a lot of work, way more than a man would have to put in. Our internal wiring makes us feel inferior, even when we try to make something out of life. We feel like we do not deserve to be as successful, wealthy, or confident as men. But the truth is that we can be. We can be anything we want. It is difficult to grant ourselves the freedom to be who we want while holding ourselves to a standard of excellence instead of perfection, but it is possible. Jen Hatmaker reveals the fierce woman, one who changes her life and eventually the world. She refuses to shrink on demand, discovers her gifts, and encourages others to do the same. This summary offers the tools that help women navigate the world's stereotypes. There are many possibilities in life, and our deeply ingrained fears should not jeopardize our chances of getting them. If you currently battle with low self-esteem and negative beliefs about yourself or are confused about how to free yourself from the shackles that the society has roped you into, then this summary is for you. Keep reading to find the secrets to becoming free, fierce, and full of life. Chapter 2. You cannot fully live until you know and understand who you are. Sometimes we are afraid or ashamed of our real selves because we've hidden it away for so long in response to others' approval or disapproval. Understanding and embracing who we are and how we have been created is the launching pad for living a fearlessly real life where we no longer pretend to be something other than what we are on the inside. But it is hard to stay true to ourselves because we have learned to adjust how we act and the things we say to fit into any context we find ourselves. If you craft your personality around pleasing the intended audience, the target never quits moving, and in chasing it, you forfeit who you truly are. Jen Hatmaker Our environment has different expectations that affect our ability to be self-aware, but the deepest parts of who we are can rise regardless. You need to pay attention to your abilities. You may understand yourself based on wrong information gathered from different sources. Be aware of this possibility and ward off the compulsion to conform to the default stereotype. Knowing yourself is a combination of enough lived years, observable patterns, internal investigation, and feedback from the people closest to you. Work to find the best version of yourself by diving deep into your personality, motives, fears, and qualities. Who you are matters so much because there is great freedom that comes with discovering the real you. The goodness in everyone is revealed in our diversity, so you do not have to be like anyone else. You are the only one who can live your life the way it should be lived. A good knowledge of your strengths and weaknesses can help you make better life decisions. Chapter 3. You are always enough. If you ever feel like you're not, check the environment that you're in and make some changes. At every turn, women have to deal with the misogyny that society deals us. From an early age, girls are taught subtly and overtly to contain their emotions while boys are encouraged to expand their ideas and be assertive. Girls are always taught to apologize and accommodate anything and everything. Hence, women are afraid to take up space, even if it is rightfully theirs. 
While it is true that women have historically been affected by the patriarchy in the world, there is no one-size-fits-all message for how much space women should take up. Every woman should be allowed to live as freely as they want on their terms. If you listen to people who always make you feel exhausted, they are leading you into their own space that does not match yours. There's nothing more life-giving than an environment that matches your energy. An assertive woman will always face resistance but chooses to do things fearlessly because it is always her decision to own her space. You control your space by exuding confidence, not hysterics or rudeness. Your confidence can produce a calming effect even in difficult times. You are not required to depreciate so others can continue to take up your space. Every woman has been told they are not enough, and our culture wants us to be more in certain categories and less in others. It takes courage to resist this damaging message. You need to be comfortable in your skin because you are well put together the way you are. You are nobody's copy, so don't look sideways or to the media, group norms, or a reduced definition of womanhood or feminism. Wherever you naturally feel is the right place for you. There is room for you, just the right amount. Be content and proud of your range, the lane you thrive in, and the capacity in which you blossom. Jen Hatmaker Chapter 4 You are not defined by your body or what society says about it. You are worth way more than your physical features. Women have always been at war with their bodies. When it comes to women's bodies, the message is, be less. This is because society promotes skinny women as the best women. Women waste untold emotional energy chasing the perfect figure, harming themselves with junk diets and pills to outrun the normal human body. Body ideals always change and aren't real. They are invented and then exploited by billion-dollar industries that profit from our body image issues. Body image issues start at a young age and do not just materialize in adulthood. Disordered thinking leads to disordered eating, and young girls are thinking terribly about their bodies. If you struggle with your body, you are not self-obsessed or weak. You are the result of an industry devised to make you feel bad about yourself. The beauty standards that different brands portray make us perceive our bodies in a way that requires us to change. The beauty industry keeps pushing the message that the body continually needs improvement. We often forget that our mind and body are both equally us, and our character and soul, intelligence, and creativity are intertwined with our bodies. Your mind and body are intricately interwoven, and together all are parts of who you are. Your bodies can help you experience power in a way that is just as important to you as having thoughts and ideas. Jen Hatmaker Paying attention to your body begins with mindfulness. You do what you want without being judgmental. Three concepts can affect our ability to become mindfully embodied. Mental freedom, social power, and physical power. Mental freedom. This requires that you let go of the mental restrictions you have harbored since childhood. Social power. When we experience rejection for violating made-up rules in society, we become unable to love our bodies. Physical power. The link between physical ability and body positivity is clear. The stronger you are, the more confident you feel about your body. Did you know? Research shows that 53% of American girls are unhappy with their bodies, and by the time they are 17, it grows to 78%. Chapter 5. Like anyone else, you deserve goodness. You are worthy of happiness that you do not have to fight for. Inferiority complex, embarrassment, 
and fear are some of the major reasons women do not achieve or even give their goals a shot. These feelings also foster the belief that they do not deserve goodness. Like everyone else, you deserve better. Other people benefit when you do not believe you are worthy of good things, but you are unstoppable once you believe you deserve better. When we hold our pain with fierce, empowered truth, we can speak up and tell our stories to protect ourselves and others from being harmed. Dr. Kristen Neff Whenever you feel inferior, try to practice fierce self-compassion and tell yourself that you deserve all the good things in your life. Often, this feeling of inferiority stems from a rough childhood. If you were denied goodness in your childhood, it would take a lot of effort to restore it in adulthood. This causes you to accidentally sabotage your happy days because goodness feels foreign to you. The world of possibility is infinite, and goodness is something you should always claim. Instead of being overcome with negative thoughts when you experience a setback, remind yourself that you are not a failure and give yourself permission to move forward. Life breaks us in many ways because we live in a world where injustice prevails, but God's original intention is still a possibility. We can be happy. Goodness is everywhere. In relationships, exciting dreams, freedom from toxicity. By drawing boundaries, speaking up, and creating safety, you can rid your space of negativity and begin to experience goodness again. Also, you have to fight for goodness because it does not come easily in this world full of anger and fear. It begins in your mind, transfers to your expectations, materializes through your words, and emerges through your actions. Chapter 6. You can't go up the ladder of success by relying solely on your efforts. Many of us are bad at asking for help and worse at accepting it. This can compromise our relationships and cause our problems to become unbearable burdens. Contrary to what many people think, we become weaker when we refuse to ask for help. As good as it feels to be handling all the aspects of your life successfully, it is also necessary that you ask for help from time to time. Asking for help gives you ample time to focus on other areas of your life and become even stronger. The more complex the problem, the more help you need, so we need to figure out how to have a culture where help is much more embedded. Tim Brown We invent objections to asking for help, claiming it would be too much of an inconvenience for others, but research says otherwise. In the two-year examination of IDEO's Information Design Engineering Organization, Helping culture, researchers discovered that many people want to help and the experience of successfully assisting others boosted morale and job satisfaction. A collaborative culture produces better results every time. Learning to ask for help makes work more enjoyable and increases productivity. The world dictates that we should be independent competitors reluctant to share ideas, But there is no such thing as a self-made woman because everyone succeeds due to the help that someone else rendered them. There are five ways to get better at asking for help. Earn responses to your requests by helping others first because then you would have gained their trust and built a relationship. Be certain of what you want to ask for to avoid complicating the problem or confusing the other person. Whenever you ask for help, ensure that your requests are specific, meaningful, action-oriented, real, and time-bound. Help lurks in unexpected places, so do not assume that you know what people know. Create a culture where asking for help is the norm. This encourages your friends and family to get more comfortable asking for and receiving help. Sometimes the help you need may be clinical, and there is no shame in this. Seek necessary help so you can heal and live a healthy life. Chapter 7. 
Your relationships can open the door to more success. Form strong bonds with people who are as concerned about your goals as you. The self-determination theory posits that people will experience wellness if they have good relationships with others. Good relationships encourage us to embrace new opportunities. They also provide support in stressful times and make us resilient. They are the key to a meaningful life and a cure for sorrow. Healthy relationships spur you to do better. If you find yourself always drained by a relationship, try to fix it or completely cut off from it. Whatever you do, remember that you perform better when you are part of a team. If you feel particularly lonely in a specific area of your life, try inviting more people in and watch yourself improve. Everyone wants connection, but unless we let ourselves be vulnerable enough to communicate with other people, we might never experience that connection we crave. Sometimes building a community does not work out outrightly. It might take a few tries and failures, but by looking out for red flags and carefully investing in your relationships, you can be successful. Do not cover up your loneliness with busyness or success. Instead, take a giant leap and reach out to someone that may be willing to go through life with you. There is a central need for women to stay silent about loneliness. For some reason, loneliness breeds shame. This is a lie that has kept us from building healthy relationships. It's okay to connect with others. Jen Hatmaker Chapter 8. All your dreams are valid, especially when you are ready to put in the work required to achieve them. The things you want do not have to be approved by a husband's wants, children's needs, or obey the rules that patriarchy has set for women over the years. Having a dream does not cancel your service to your family or to others. If you have a secret dream, you need to bring it out to the open. Even when other people have done what you want to do, you can still begin using your methods. Nobody can fill the void that belongs to you. Only your talent can. Dreams are not limited, but come in every shape and size and can be viewed in different ways. You are in charge of bringing yours to reality. If you don't believe in your capability, no one else will. So, if you have a dream, show up for it. Work hard to achieve it, and others will come around to help you. Treat your early steps as seriously as you would the great moments. They are a crucial part of your success. Have a flexible mindset that allows you to embrace new ideas because a fixed mindset means you believe that you cannot have a change of ideas. As we grow older, our beliefs change or become strengthened. If you find that some things about your faith bother you, do not be ashamed of this. Women are usually too scared to explore their doubts and ask questions, but the truth is that curiosity comes with maturity. If you are asking hard questions, you are on the right track, which is relevant to your faith. Spiritual exploration is nurtured in the faith community, and asking questions and seeking guidance is always a good idea. Courage is required for advocacy because criticism is guaranteed. Jen Hatmaker We live in a diverse world with conflicting ideas everywhere, but you are not required to engage every argument or defend your beliefs. Listen to the things that your heart cares about and turn your energy toward them. Chapter 9 if there's going to be a generation that thrives on the right values, it starts now. Raise your children in a healthy environment. Telling the truth is usually never easy, but it is necessary for growth. Our relationships bear the brunt of our lies and, depending on their gravity, can lead to permanent damage. Rather than lying, it feels better to practice radical honesty. This involves sharing what you feel, think, what you have done, and what you want. It is a way to break free from an overly reactive mind. Every parent has the responsibility of building a family where honesty is cherished. 
by asking leading questions and always demonstrating and rewarding truth-telling, children begin to understand the importance of telling the truth. There are many ways to achieve an honest home environment. Ask everyone if they have problems they need others to help with. Appreciate everyone for something that they did. Think of as many ideas and solutions to a problem as is possible, and then choose one answer that everyone agrees to try out for a week. Organize a family activity to keep everyone together. The truth always works out, and being honest without fear of confrontation shows that you respect others. As much as you would like to build healthy relationships, some are consistently one-sided, manipulative, and unsafe. Many people just want the things that you can offer them and end up treating you like garbage. There is a difference between a disagreement between you and your friend and a relationship defined by drama. A healthy relationship does not make you frustrated, disappointed, or exhausted. Choose the people who choose you and are willing to keep the relationship you have drama-free. A healthy relationship should make you better, and if you discover that it is not, create healthy boundaries so that the toxic people stop having access to you. By admitting your wrong, asking and offering forgiveness, and taking ownership of your own choices, you can live a life devoid of drama. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. C.S. Lewis Conclusion. Your truest self in its fullness, quirks, talents, dreams, and beliefs, is an irreplaceable gift to this world. And there is no reason to hide any part of you. You can do anything. Jen Hatmaker. Self-discovery and disclosure involve hard work, and you have to believe that you are capable of changing your life. Own your uniqueness and step out into the truth because different aspects of your life need you. You are always enough. Your body is strong enough to do the things that you desire and you are exactly who you are meant to be. You deserve the goodness that you can get only when you are open to valuable connections and seek help intentionally. You cannot do everything on your own. On your journey through life, Seek help from the right sources. Your wants are valid, and so are your dreams. If you put in the work, you can achieve the goals that you have set for yourself. So, do not stop dreaming just because someone told you they're impossible. Choose your life. You have the right to be happy. As you journey through life, you need other people to help you through. Be careful of the people you let into your personal space. Drama is a distraction that takes you further away from your goals. You can do anything you want because you're fierce, free, full of fire, and strong enough to break every glass ceiling. Try this. Write all your dreams down in a journal. For every dream, attach actionable plans. Share it with your loved ones so that they can hold you accountable and help you achieve them. Also, create cards that remind you that you're deserving of goodness and place them around your home or workspace. 